than any place. In California, everything's bigger. <laughs> Best job we ever had was that airport in Panama. Gee, it was nice and warm down there. Oh, hi, you gang. Steve! Hey, Woody! Hi, Steve! Hi, Woody. Hi, Woody. Hop them back with you? Sure. Wait till you hear. Where are the outfit with you? Yeah, regular bull bungler. <laughs> Gosh, it's good to see you guys. The same old face. Except Hank over there. Hank Lincoln, this is my brother Steve. I put him on in your place because he covers more territory. Oh, yeah? More power to you, Hank. Glad to know you, Storm, Steve. His brother's only kidding. <laughs> How was Washington, Steve? Yeah, hot or cold? Washington was capital, huh? Oh, oh, oh sit down. Did Pop get the contract? <laughs> Don't worry. Pop's got something terrific. Tell me about it. Well, I'm going to let him tell you about it. He's waiting for you down at the hotel. Want you to bring the whole gang down. <laughs> I better hurry and get back. You just cleaned up as fast as we can. You got to be curious. <laughs> so long, gang. Hurry up, huh? So long, Steve. The howitzer. I hope the next job's in the tropics. I ain't been warm once since we left Panama. <laughs> well, <laughs> not all over. I wonder where we're going. I hope it's someplace warm. We'll find out in a minute, huh, Woody? Yeah. You guys go ahead. I gotta stop in here a minute. <clears throat> Got the old man a new pipe. Uh oh. Wrong room. Two twelve. Oh, this is my room. Yes, Woody, this is your room. Come on in. Uh. Well, have you forgotten me? Forget you? Oh, I should say not. I, I was surprised for a minute, but just for a minute. Well, you don't act like it. Aren't you glad to see me? Oh, yes, yes, sure I am. Better kiss me? Oh, sure. You never used to kiss me like that. Oh, I do a lot of things I didn't used to do. I... Oh, pardon me. Frosty told me that you... Oh, <laughs> this is my brother Steve, Miss... Uh, uh... Hey, what are you trying to do? Introduce me to Ann Caswell? Ann Caswell? Sticky face! Well, you big <laughs> fake. You didn't know me from Adam. Well, I live and breathe sticky face. What are you doing in my room? Well, the hotel's jammed, so I thought maybe you'd double up with me for a day or two and let Ann bunk here. Steve, remember when she used to have a yen for me and I wouldn't go for her? She used to be chewing on those long black licorice things all the time. Shoelaces. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And you were all over sticky. Oh, 
It's funny, I don't remember that. Oh, you always had your nose in a book. I used to cry my eyes out about Woody. You always said he was too old for me. <laughs> I was 16 to your six. Uh, how's your dad? Oh, well, he's waiting for us right now. Come on, we're holding up an important meeting. Yeah, let's go. She's marvelous, isn't she, Woody? Marvelous. You know, she showed me quite a time in Washington. Took me to all the right places. Here we go again. Oh, you thought I'd get soft if I went east, eh? I'm convinced. Uh, you know, someday I'm going to teach him that trick. You remember Blair Caswell, Woody? Yes. Yeah. You've got the old Moxie, hasn't he? He certainly has. Good to see you again, Woody. Nice to see you. What do you think of my two roughnecks, Blair? A couple of chips off the old block. Hey, Pop, what about this new job? Steve over there treats it like a military secret. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? All right, men. Let's get out of it. Oh, I'll wait till next season. First of all, be in the league. Shut up, you mugs. Pop wants to talk. Shut up, man. Quiet, quiet. As you know, Steve and I went to Washington after a new road contract. While there, we ran into Blair Caswell, one of my oldest friends and one of the greatest highway engineers we have. As far as I'm concerned, the greatest. Instead of getting the job I went for, I finished up with another job, a much bigger one. I want Mr. Caswell to tell you about it. Gentlemen, for a great many years now, I've had a dream, a road connecting our country with Alaska. It was to be the beginning of an international highway that would eventually link us to our sister republics in Latin America. And how about... However... On December the 7th, an Alaskan highway suddenly became an urgent military necessity. A few hours after Pearl Harbor was attacked, we were given the go signal. The Army Engineer Corps has been assigned the job of pushing this road through on a nine-month schedule. You men have seen some tough assignments, but none to compare with this. When I suggested Jack Ormsby as the one man who could best boss the pioneering unit that would blaze the trail, he didn't hesitate for one moment. So, gentlemen, I give you back your boss. No longer Pop Ormsby of the Ormsby Road Building Company, but as of next week, Major John Ormsby of the Army Engineer Corps. Yeah. And a boy, Pop, you're a howitzer. I knew you'd be for it, Woody. That's great. But what happens to us? When I joined up, I figured I was joining for all of us. Steve is already signed. He'll be a technical sergeant. Now, how about the rest of you bohunks? Major, it's for you to commandeer and me to serve. <laughs> well, when do we start? You gotta ask your wife first. Are you kidding? This is me opportunity to go where I don't have to ask her nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I told you how they take it. Wait a minute, Pop. Frosty hasn't said anything. Alaska? <laughs> Here's your application blank. Fill them out and bring them back tomorrow. Here's yours, Woody. Oh, thanks, Dad. I want to fight the Japs, all right. But building a highway is not my kind of fight. You got it all wrong, Woody. This is important. Yeah, yeah, I know. I want to sling lead at the Japs, not mud. Steve, take care of the boys. Okay, Pop. Come in here, man, Woody. Well, Dad, this is something I never figured on, son. I'm sorry you feel bad about it. I was waiting for you to get back so I could turn it. Frosty and I are going to join the Marines. I could have understood Steve wanting to go back to college for his engineering degree, but you... Steve and I are a little different. Sure. You were always more like me. You wanted to work with me side by side. But now, on the biggest job of all, but, well, I... I can't believe you won't be there. I hate to be stubborn about it, but that's how I feel. Well, that's the way it is. I knew you'd understand. Let's get back to the meeting. Huh? There you are, Pop. Thanks, Steve. We'll need more bulldozers than we figured on. Well, you ask for anything you need. I'll rush the recommendations. Well, Steve, 
Will you ask Ann to hurry with that equipment file? She's been gone ten minutes. And you bet. She probably stopped to powder her nose. You know women. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, look at this I had them all in alphabetical order. Oh, well, here, I'll help you. Here's an N. And here's a Q. Hey, you did powder your nose, didn't you? Yes. What about it? Nothing, except well, it's the cutest nose I've ever seen. <laughs> if you've seen them all. No, but best of all, it's got the face to go with it. Here's an X. Hey, we haven't any equipment with an X. Yes, we have, silly. Excavate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and how about making up your mind right now? This town's loaded with preachers and... Hey. Instead of worrying about that right now, you should be concentrating on getting that stubborn brother of yours to change his mind. Oh, no, wait a minute. Don't get the wrong idea about Woody. He's the best there is. I'm serious. He can do a much better job on the highway than any other branch of the service. When Woody's mind's made up, I can't do anything about it. Never could. No? Maybe I can. There, that's got it. Oh, speak of the devil in wolf's clothing. Hi, kids. What gives? We still had it hot and heavy. Here's your file, Dad. Thanks, Ann. You guys ready to put on the feed bag? You better not stop now, Woody. We'll have something sent up. All right. Not this girl. I'm dying for one of those nice, juicy steaks with some air that's not all cluttered up with bulldozers and tractors. What's the matter? getting you down? Hey, give me that coat, will you? Hey, I might go for one of those steaks myself. You better stick with us, Steve. These forms are going to go out on tonight's air mail. Yes, sir. Major Legree. <laughs> Don't let her near any jukeboxes, Woody. She'll squander your last nickel. <laughs> Thanks for the tip, Steve. Foxy, have you read the weather forecast for tonight? What did it say? Stormy. Lowering temperature. It did? I better get my heavy muffler and mittens, huh? I wouldn't take a chance. I'll be right back. Let's hurry. Aren't you going to wait for it? Look, Sticky Face, we got ten years to catch up on. What do we want with him? <laughs> Let's take the stairs. Come on. You know, Anne, when I kissed you this afternoon, I, I really didn't know it was you. <laughs> As if I didn't know. So you you see that welcome wasn't for you. Um, let's start all over again, huh? You behave yourself. Steve's younger than you, but in many ways more grown up. Oh, if you mean as a student or a boy with a career, you bet your life, but... Of course, he hasn't got my charm. Or... Why has he? Your dad's terribly disappointed you're not going along. Ah, oh, no, he isn't. Well, let's talk about something else. You, for instance. Woody, they need men like you up there. My dad gave his entire career for that road. Almost gave his life. He fell off a cliff while mapping the territory. He never walked straight again. But that didn't stop him. Oh, and if we're going to spend the whole evening arguing, I'd... look, some guys like to go out in big roads. I want to go out and fight. There'll be plenty of fights. With one difference. They won't get any headlines or medals if that's what you're after. Oh, for the love of Mike. I thought we came out to have a good time. Now, if you're going to lecture me all evening, I... Maybe I'm spoiling your evening? Maybe I am. Oh, come on, don't be a wet blanket. Well, maybe I'd better go back. Oh, wait a minute. You're like a firecracker, aren't you? Evening's only begun. I'm sure you can find somebody more amusing than oh, I. Oh, but Anne... I don't want to be anybody's wet blanket. Yeah, but Anne, sit down like a nice little girl and eat your steak. I'm not hungry. Oh, but, but please, you got to eat your steak to keep your strength. Will you let me go? Oh, Anne, please. Let me go. She means it. Hi, Ken. Hello, Woody. Hello, Willie. Hi, Willie. How's it going? Hi, 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 Woody and me is going to be on some tropical island, surrounded with nothing but moonlight and surround. If you run into Dorothy, get me her autograph. Oh, think you're funny, huh? Just for that, I'm going to give Shorty my electric blanket. I won't need it no more. Gee, thanks. How does it function? It's full of coils. Goils? Not goils, coils, wire. You press the button, then you turn up the thermostat as hot as you want it. Say, that's very practical. Thanks. Uh, here's the battery that goes with it. You'll need a ground crew with that blanket. Plane <laughs> <laughs> 22, San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, leaving a meeting. That's, that's a... Uh, 
Well, well Steel well. goons, when this is over. I hope you can get me a jab. Oh, wait. Me too. Take, Take care of yourself, Rocky. Oh, oh, Perry. <laughs> so long, fellas. Take good care of that blanket, Shorty. So long, Steve. So long, Frosty. Gee, Pop, I wish you was going with us. Good luck here, Frosty. Excuse me, I gotta make a purchase. Wish you'd change your mind, Woody. Pop will be mighty proud of you up there, Steve. So long. So long, fella. You better get the men aboard, Steve. Yes, sir. Well, Squirt? Better look out for those squaws up there, Pop. They'll flock around that uniform. Don't you worry about me. Take care of yourself. Goodbye, son. Goodbye, sir. Well? Goodbye, Mr. Caswell. Goodbye, Woody. I'll be with you in a minute, Dad. All right, dear. I want to apologize for the other night, Woody. Sorry we didn't get to know each other better. I guess we're going in opposite directions. I'm afraid so. Well, goodbye, then. Bye. Ann. Or... Hey, Woody. Woody. Look what I picked up at the newsstand. Just a thing for where we're going, huh? Sweet mama meal, heavenly flower. Hangnails. Come on. soon be here. I'm one big hunk of ice. Relax. Slap yourself. My hands will break off. I should never let you talk me into it. Coming way up here to the world's ice house. Just for a girl. What if I gave you that idea? We came up here to build a road. Hmm. Wait till I see that shorty. I'll take that electric blanket back so quick he'll get pneumonia. Eskimo giver. Here they come now. We'll give them a real welcome. what I knew best. Mm -hmm. One more gurgle out of you, and I'll drop you right in this goo. There you are. I can't tell you how I feel about this, son. I'm going down right now and tell the general to cut that schedule in half. <laughs> this was only the beginning. 
as their brothers in arms battled on South Pacific Islands, in China and Africa, these men fought the wilderness. Inch by inch, foot by foot, mile by mile, they cut the Alcan Highway northward, 1,600 miles to go. If the Japs came, the road had to be ready. If the battalion working from Alaska South is doing as well as we are, we'll beat the deadline. Yes, that fellow helped us a lot. I'm glad you came up today. Come on, I want to show you something. We've reached Black Rock. That's going to take some cutting around. Cutting around nothing. That'll eat up a week. We're going to blast five days right off the schedule. them. They got the know-how born into them. Yeah, sure is haphazard. One slip, one of them caps go off, and we pick up the particles. They're all right. They know what they're doing. You're sticking a cap, Steve. Okay. Got it. Steve! Oh, that's a long way down. I'm not worried about going down. I'm worried about what would happen to the dynamite. <laughs> Captain the stick. Check Steve's arm. I think he heard it. I'm afraid I'll live. Well, just the same, you get over to first aid. Yes, sir. Took a pretty good bite out of it at that, Major. Well, you certainly did it the hard way. Frosty, that's a very fancy band you imported. Uh, Frosty Gimble serves nothing but the fun. How about this dance? I'd love it. about you and I have been ever since that day at the hotel. Woody. I'll be honest with you. I didn't change my mind about the road. 
I came here because you were here. If they'd have been building a road in China, I'd have gone there too. Does that make any difference? Not in the least, Sergeant. Well, I wanted to thank you for saving me, Woody, but I see you've already received your reward. Steve. Hold on, Steve. What for? I should have figured this would happen. You're the glamorous brother. Steve. Em, you've got to tell me the truth. Am I interfering with anything between you and Steve? No, Woody. I never made him any promises. I'll straighten him out right now. Steve. Look, Steve. I'm on the level with Ann. I know what you're thinking. I've probably given you a reason for it in the past. I've known you felt that way. You've got the reason. That's the way it is. There's nothing can be done about it. Let him cool off. He'll be all right. Good. Blankets, huh? No, no, I was, uh, I was just on right on it. That's Steve's bed, remember? Not no more, it ain't. He changed tents with me. It was his idea. He comes into my tent with all his duffel, mind you, and tosses mine outside. Wants me to change with him. And that's orders. Gee, I wish I had my electric blanket back. You mean to tell me you haven't got that back yet? I hate to ask him for it. When you give a guy something gratuitous, you just can't take it back. Especially when he appreciates it like Shorty does. Uh. What's the matter, Shorty? Getting a little hot? Nope. <laughs> you kill me. <laughs> Listen, Rough House, if you ever turn this blankly blank blanket up to fever heat again, I'll murder you. <laughs> I turned it up half an hour ago. <laughs> if I didn't think it would hurt Frosty's feelings, why, I'd toss this contraption right back in his throat. <laughs> the big gift horse. <laughs> <laughs> Did he say anything about me? Oh, why should he? Anyway, you don't have to get mixed up in it. No, I'm talking about Steve. Oh, I thought you meant Shorty, about the blanket. Well, if you want that blanket, why don't you go get it? I don't like to hurt his feelings. But I'm being too thin-skinned about it. He's just being piggish. Maybe he doesn't know you want it. Oh, no. Every time I pass him, I shake my geese pimples right in his face. He just won't take a hint. Well, then I'd go get it. Yeah, darn him. That's just what I'm going to do, right now. There's your word. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. What's happened to Steve? What do you mean? Now, don't start pulling that innocent act. What is it between you two? Oh, just a little misunderstanding. He'll get over it in the morning. Not from what he said, Woody. He wants to be transferred to a combat unit. What? He just asked me. If he insists, I'll have to make out the application. Oh, he's crazy. I'll go over and talk to him. I want my blanket, George. You can't do this to me. I didn't mean to give it to you. I didn't know I was coming to Alaska. Now listen, Shorty. I know... Uh... What's the matter with you? Oh, nothing, sir. I feel fine. Frosty. The blanket, the blanket. You better get it up. Get it up. Yeah. Hi, Frosty. Look, uh, how about, uh, how about, uh, got a cigarette? Certainly. Thanks. 
Listen, Shorty. I come over to ask you, uh... What? Got a match? What's the matter with you? Here. Thanks. No kidding, Shorty. About that blanket. That blanket is a thing of beauty and a joy forever. It was really magnanimous of you. Oh, well. Skip it. Oh, don't go, Frosty. Sit down and discuss a while. Yeah, thanks. Blanket makes a tent nice and warm. Yeah. Oh, how? I, uh, I better not keep you fellas up. Oh, that's all right, Frosty. We never go to bed early, do we, Shorty? No. I, I better be going. I'm, uh... I'm, uh... Glad you like the blanket, Shorty. Good night, fellas. Good night and thanks. Good night, Frosty. <laughs> Fever heat, eh? Well, here's where you get barbecued. <laughs> Steve. What's all this malarkey about you asking for a transfer? You're an engineer. You belong here. Will you quit running my life? I can't help it if Ann and I... Well, I've seen you operate around women plenty. What's Ann got to do with it? Nothing, sir. I'll tell you, Puff. I can't take it anymore. I'm sick of being the goat in this family. Steve? Yes, all my life. I'm going to be the great engineer. I'm going to make the family name famous. I've got to keep my nose to the grindstone, but not Woody. No, he can tear around and do as he pleases. That's all right, but when he double-crosses me... I the one girl I... anybody. I can't help it if Ann and I... You're a liar, an underhanded, what? backstabbing Eve! Ever since your mother died, I've tried for one thing. To bring up two boys I could be proud of. Well, I'm not proud of you anymore. I'm ashamed. Oh, well, the only reason... I don't want to hear anymore. Squabbling like spoiled brats. I may be your father, but I'm also your commanding officer. Yes, sir. Tomorrow morning, I want you both on the job. I don't want to hear any more about transfers. And if there's any more of this scrapping, by Jupiter, I'll toss you both in the hooch cow. Good night. Choose your mate by mail, the Lonely Hearts way. We introduce you, you do the rest. No fee unless satisfied. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Hey, Frosty, how about some stew? Eh, yeah, always in a hurry. <laughs> I hardly get my cook shack settled when you guys move it 20 miles. What do we hear? Choose your mate by mail the Lonely Hearts way. <laughs> Give a little of them specimens. Give me that. Frosty, you ain't considering matrimony perchance. Why not? When this job is over, I got me a plan. What do you want to get married for? When a hot water bottle will do the trick. Well, Frosty's right. He needs somebody to keep house for him. You pick one of those out yet? I ain't made up my mind what my type is. Now, here's a beauty. I'll bet she weighs at least 180 pounds on the hook. Hey, give me that. Hey, look at that one. She's built like an hourglass. Hey, Shorty, I got an idea. Suppose you and me choose a bride for Frosty, huh? Now, let me see. What are you interested in? Uh, beauty, efficiency, or uh, temperature? Give me that before I tear you apart. Oh, now, there's no need Hurry to... Hurry up with the feet bag, you mug. We've got miles to make before supper. What's better, Frosty? Ah, them guys ain't got no romance in their souls. Hey, you mugs. Outside and get rolling. We got miles to make.
considered nice looking. Good looking. Handsome. Muck and musk egg, blasting, digging, slashing, these uniformed Paul Bunyans wrestle with nature. Now this road was just a supply line of preparation. At any moment, the Japs might attack. Then it would become a lifeline of necessity. But fight as they might, it wasn't always possible to beat the schedule. Eight miles a day. Eight miles a day. Why don't you handle it the way the Brazilian engineers did on their road from Rio to Natal? Corduroy a log road so the cats can get some footing. That's all right when we get into the worst muskate. But right now it's the thick woods that's holding us up. Well, frankly, John, the general thinks you can move faster. You know I'm pushing my men from early morning until after dark. I know that. But the unit working south from Alaska is averaging two miles a day better than we are. Yeah? And you also know that this is a more difficult kind of territory. We can't get any more out of the equipment, Blair. I know that. The machinery won't do it all by itself. But from what the general said, you've got to inspire your men to do more than they think they can. He's rather worried about their morale. Yeah? All right. Thanks for being so frank, Blair. I'll inspire them if I have to whip every one of them myself. this morning at breakfast about them two cats we had down south? Yes, yeah. You know, they seem to work different up here. I don't know. I guess it must be the allergy. Sergeant Armstrong. Yes, sir? What's the meaning of this layoff? Oh, just a little rest, sir. The lead bulldozer isn't moving fast enough to keep us working. Get Sergeant Armstrong. Yes, sir. You men come with me. Yes, sir. If you can't shove ahead fast enough to keep the men behind you busy, I'll have to put someone else on the lead bulldozer. I'm going as fast as I can, sir. You've got to move faster. Yes, sir. Thanks for making me the fall guy. Well, I only told him the facts. I'm stepping on your heels all the time. I suppose you also told him you could do my job better than I can. Nope, that's an idea. Oh, Steve, why don't you grow up? Quit pouting. If you'd like to bet a month's pay, I can't cover more ground with one of those babies than you can. Oh, so I've got to pin your ears back, huh? Yep, that's for me. It's a bet. You're on. You shouldn't be doing this, Sergeant. You hold the stakes. Anybody else want in? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got five on Steve. I'm out of here. And stay close so you can pay the boys off when I'm through. The one who's ahead by quitting time wins. Fair enough. Right, and give me plenty of room. Those trees will be falling like confetti. Come on. I had to be blown.
in thunder am I going to do with you two? You not only smash up two perfectly good pieces of equipment, but you injure one of my best men. Lucky you didn't kill him. There's no explanation, sir. You bet there isn't. Here we are breaking our backs trying to put this road through, and you two... Well, accidents can happen to anybody. Not to me anymore, they can't. The general said the morale of my men was bad. What do you think it is now? It isn't your fault. We were just a couple of nitwits. I asked you for a transfer, sir. If that's what you want, all right. I can't fight the road and you both. Well, I only feel it'd be better for all concerned, sir. I had plans for you, big plans, but... All right. Go ahead and quit. I'll wire for your transfer to the mate. Yes, sir. If he goes now, he'll never come back to us, Woody. I know that. At least there was something I could do. Right now, you can leave me alone. She rides around on a broom. What does she say? Mm -hmm. uh, the usual. I'm 30. Look much younger. 30? Are you kidding, Clementine? Hey, where's the other picture? Right here. Who is? Uh, it's lucky I'm a sentimental guy. Otherwise, I wouldn't have saved this program from the Follies. <laughs> uh, Shorty, you remember that night? Do oh, I remember? Oh. <laughs> is this going to give Frosty a surprise? <laughs> We won't spring the real one on him until later. That'll pay him back for giving me that blanket. Yeah, come on. Hold everything. Here he comes. Hello, Frosty. Hiya. How's Hank? Busted game, couple of ribs. He'll pull through, though. Ah, those guys should have known better. Yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, Frosty, here's a letter for you. Just a form letter, I guess. Wait till he sees the form in the letter. I am going to marry. <whistles> Simply too, too divine. A goddess. What a hunk of punkertude. You mean to tell me you get something like that from a marriage bureau? And you guys were so contemptuous. Oh, Frosty. Let me be the first to congratulate you. Thanks, Rough House. Me too. Thanks. Uh -huh. Hey, what did she have to say? I uh, won't read you all. She uh, says here in part, I love you. Love you. You sound like the type of man I have been dreaming about all my life. Say, you better write her and sign up the bargain immediately. Somebody's liable to get to her first. Shorty's right. That kind of merchandise ought to be rationed. Yeah. Maybe you're right. Who's got pencil and paper? Come on, help me look for it. Yeah. Go ahead. I got the table. Major? Hello, Blair. How would you like a nice home-cooked dinner in a non-military atmosphere? Is it all settled up in the cabin? Oh, Ann's been fussing around there all day, just as though we were going to stay there forever. Come on up and have dinner with us. Not tonight. I don't feel up to it. You sound pretty low. Give it to me straight, Blair. Am I too old for this job? Read that last part over again. Um, yeah. This is a firm offer. 
so don't accept no other propositions. With all my affection, looking forward, Frosty. That's good. Yeah. P.S. In case you cannot co... Well, go ahead, write it, write it, write it. P.S. In case you cannot cook, do not worry about it, because I have... Wait a minute, wait a minute, not so fast. Do not worry about it. Because I happen to be a gastro... Um, uh, gastro-comical wizard. Gastro-comical? What's that? Gastro-comical? What's cooking? With gas. No. That's it. That cinches it. Come on, Shorty, let's blow. Good night, Frosty. Well, happy dreams. Good night, fellas. Gastro-comical. With gas. When will we spring the real picture on him? Tomorrow morning, after he's mailed his letter. <laughs> I bet. And. Hello. Hello. Your nose is red. Oh, it's getting colder out. Where's the major? He couldn't come. Anything wrong? No, he wants to resign his command. What? I think I talked him out of it. Why, why would he consider doing such a thing? He's doing a good job. It's other things. Steve's getting a transfer. I'm taking the wire with me to base camp tonight. What's come between you? Nothing, Dad. I wouldn't want to think that my daughter wasn't playing fair. Darling, I'm not in love with him. I'm sure he thought you were. He took a lot of things for granted. Maybe there were times in Washington when... Now that I've seen Woody, all that's changed. It's Woody, then? Yes. I knew it the minute I saw him again. Oh, if you'd only been honest with Steve from the very beginning. I have. If he wants to quit his job, that's up to him. Rogue can get along without him. Oh, certainly the Rogue can get along without him. But what about his father? Those two boys are his whole life. And now he thinks he's a complete failure and right in the middle of the biggest job he ever tackled. Don't you see that? Darling, you seem to think it's up to me. I do. Well, maybe there is something I can do. Frosty, is Woody there? No, sir. He didn't come in from supper yet. See that he gets that, will you please? Yes, sir. As soon as he comes in. Thank you. Oh, uh, Mr. Caswell, are you driving back to base camp? That's right. Would you do me a favor? Sure. Mail this. Airmail special. Must be important. Mr. Caswell, that letter's going to change my whole life. In that case, I'll take particular care to see that it gets off. Thanks. Good luck, Rossi. Bye. I dream of Lottie with a Lottie, Lottie, da 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 dee. I feel like a bridegroom already. Hi, Frosty. Oh, uh, hello. Where you been? Out. Uh, uh, here's a note for you. Feminine penmanship, too. See you later, Frosty. Where are you going? Out. That's where you've just been. It's after dark. Regulations say you dasn't leave camp. Dan wants to see me, I dare. Oh, well. <laughs> we can't blame him, can we, honey? Whoa. The wind walks in, too. How are you? How should I be? A beautiful girl, you, and a thousand miles from everywhere. Say, you fixed this place up. I think I'd better stir the fire up. Oh, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Girls don't know how to build a fire. Look, put the small wood on first. Then, then log creates a draft. There you are, a blazing fire, a beautiful girl, and me. How about a little music?
know you've got a smudge in that pretty little chin of yours. Hmm? Willie, please. Ann. What's the matter with you? It's been a lot of fun. I think we'd better stop kidding ourselves. Kidding? You and me getting involved when we didn't mean to. Ann, yeah, are you living me? No, Woody. That's why I sent for you. Didn't any of the things that happened the other day mean anything to you? Yes, they did for a minute. I guess that's the way I am. I don't understand. Things don't... don't... Woody, a girl can change her mind, can't she? About that? Look, I came 3,000 miles just to see you. You're trying to tell me that... I'm sorry, that's the way it is. Look, Ann. I put myself out on the line for you. For keeps. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. It won't work out, and... There's nothing else to be said about it. And Steve was leaving just on account of us. I'm glad you tipped me off in time. Maybe I can save him from wrecking his life. For nothing. <laughs> I came as soon as I heard the alarm. He must be someplace around. We've got one chance. Down the bottom of the canyon. Give me that. Keep that around. All right. Get going. Quiven, have your men wet down the tents. Yes, sir. Come on, boy. Miss Caswell's up in the cabin. Well, there's only one way to get through, sir. Dynamite. May I have your permission? Yes. Thank you, sir. Come on, Foster. So they won't jam up. Yes, sir. I have it, sir. You think you can get through to it that way? I think so, sir. I'm going to try to blow a path right through the plane. You'll have to try it. Okay. Better fly now, fellas. Here we go. See? Hold it. <coughs> Woody. Man. We've got to get you to a hospital. Woody, you better come, too. All right. Better go in now. He hasn't much time. Hello, Woody. Fellas. Chief Frosty, I, I'm sorry. It was all my fault. 
You're nutty. I slipped, that's all. If it hadn't been for me, there wouldn't have been a fire. Me, the big shot, always grandstanding for some girl. Forget it, pal. Rough house. Yeah, Frosty. My field, see. The pitcher. Did it get burned up? No. No, it just, just scorched a little. Junior, I won't be ever able to go through with my betrothal. Ah, oh, sure you will. Don't kid me. She deserves somebody better than me anyway. No, no, Frosty. You'd have made her a swell husband. You think so, Rough House? Sure. Woody. Remember Panama, Woody? Please, Woody. Yes. It's too bad about Frosty. Yeah. Has the request for Steve's transfer gone through yet? No. Caswell was taking the wire to base camp last night, but he came back. Good. Forget about it. You mean he's changed his mind? No, but if I go, he'll stay. Woody, what in the name no, of Joe Waiter? Pop. Steve's the one that always wanted to be an engineer. And you said yourself, if he quit now, he's through. He'd be giving up a whole career. I'm not giving up anything. I didn't want to come here in the first place. I lied to you when I told you I'd changed my mind. It was the girl. Yeah. That's all over now. And if I go, I... Maybe Ann and Steve can get together. That's all he wants. Well, you don't have to go because of that, Woody. You can... Oh, it's not only that. It's frosty. If I could get a gun in my hands and get into a scrap, maybe I could forget it. Well, on a big job like this, there are always casualties. Frosty was no ordinary casualty. I started that fire myself as a direct result of disobeying orders. Thanks for the lift, soldier. Keep your mind on your work, Rogers. Yes, sir. <laughs> Rogers! Okay, come ahead. Steve. Hold it. Steve! You want me? Woody's transfer came through. He's leaving today. Well, what about it? We can't let him go like this. Feeling bitter. Steve, you may never see him again. Won't you at least go talk to him? There's nothing I can say. And... All set, Sergeant? Hang out of this, will you? Ready to leave, eh? Well, you won't be needing me now that you're getting all these new men. Read it. Japanese forces have occupied Aleutian Islands. Kiska, Atu, and Agatu. Crisis demands redoubled efforts in opening highway before scheduled time. Certainly pouring it on, aren't they? I guess there's no use talking anymore, Woody. Goodbye, sir. Everything will be all right when the war's over, Dad. You're my regards to the infantry. And write us once in a while. Yes, sir. Bye, Mr. Caswell. Woody. <laughs> There's a landslide, sir. Top of the mountain with a new cut. It's starting to crack away. They're trying to get the machines out before she gets completely. Corporal Veal? Yes, sir. Bring up every available man at once. Yes, sir. Johnson, yes, you bring up the ambulance. We may need her. Yes, sir. I'll go back with you. Yes, sir. Sergeant, you follow us. Yes, sir. Goodbye. 
Goodbye, Woody. Bye, sir. Write to me. You room for another passenger? We certainly have. You'd be in the infantry by now. Ah, oh, look at the hair on those ears. Once an engineer, always an engineer. Sergeant, you two men. Yes, sir. This is Leg. Get him back to camp. You all in one piece, kid? Yeah. What are you? Oh, Dad, you're not hurt. I think he means Steve. Oh. She means Woody. I know that now. Come on, men. Bring it up. What do you think this is, a picnic? Come on, we've got a job of clearing to do here. Come on, everybody, back on the job. <laughs> With the jack flowing of the illusions, ships were doubled. More men, more machines, day and night. One unit pushing northward. Another southward from Alaska. A miracle of bulldog tenacity and American know-how. Until just six months from the starting day... South. South? Yeah, how come you're headed north? Hey, this is it. Hey, gang, come here. Steve, shorty. Well, what's the matter with you? What? He's headed south, we're headed north. It's open, the Alton Highway. <laughs> A few days later, several hundred miles to the north, 
in the grip of an Alaskan freeze, representatives of the Canadian and United States governments cut the tape, and the Alcan Highway was officially open for business. The convoys moved northward. Men, munitions, supplies, in a solid strengthening stream. The engineer's job was done. They had met the wilderness and beaten it. Thank <laughs> you.